Hi all, Mr. Joy here. I suppose this is a new topic um, for some of us uh, regarding U values and thermal transmittance. It's question five on the higher level leaving certificate construction studies paper and it comes up every year. And it's the same, for, same formula and method that we use uh, each, each year. So when we look at, a bit, at buildings, uh, no matter when they were built, I suppose we can say that this building uh, is warm or that building is cold, but why? And that's what U values and thermal transmittance is all about. It's because it's U value through one square meter section of that building. Right? A U value is concerned with the material used in that one meter squared section. Um, I suppose a building in Ireland cannot be sold today unless you have a BER or a building energy rating certificate with it. Okay, so the higher the rating, the better it is that your house is and the more money that your house can, can get in, uh, in the open market. The lower down your house is, the, the less money your building would generally get. Um, every building material has properties associated with them. Okay, so this is just the U value, the one square meter of the building, and that's what U values. So just to just to break it down and make it a little bit easier, right? Take for example the human body, right? What has more resistance to cold passing through it, a student sitting in class with a jumper on, or a student sitting in class with a hoodie on as well over the jumper? So we know that the thickness of the material has an effect on the thermal transmittance and your body losing its heat. Obviously, if you've got the hoodie on, you've got twice the thickness, or maybe three times the thickness, depending on how many hoodies you have on, uh, to the heat passing from your body to the outside and getting cold as a result. So we know that thickness has, a, has an, in, an impact on our U value, our overall loss of heat. Um, so we know the thickness has an effect, but what about the material itself and its ability to conduct the heat or to, to, to leave the heat pass through it, or the K value as it's known. So sheep's wool, for example, is a fire retardant, we know that. The K value, right, or the condu conductivity of sheep's wool is 0 0.035 to 0 0.04 watts per meters kelvin now kelvin is the same as a degree celsius one kelvin equals one degree celsius some higher end products from kingspan which is a company in northern ireland um would have a lower i suppose that the higher end ones would have a lower um conductivity which would mean that they would be more resistant to heat loss okay so they'd be a little bit better than our sheep's wool the lower this number is, the better the material is. Different materials carry different conductivity or resistivity, which means the same. The ability of a material to conduct heat is the direct opposite to a material resisting heat transfer through it. There are some building materials or some materials used in, uh, like with NASA, for example, on their space rockets um, that are incredibly resistant to the passage of heat through it so it all depends so so far we know that thickness has an impact and the material you use has an impact on whether a building is is warm or cold um i suppose where we lose most of our heat in a building um we lo lose 25 percent out to the roof 35 percent through the walls and then the rest in through to our windows and doors so it's effectively like burning money if we don't take these areas seriously. It is also more harmful for the environment if we don't improve the insulation values of our walls, roofs, windows and doors. So this is the question that appears on the leaving certificate. This was uh, 2020's uh, pre-paper. So, a house built in the 1970s has an uninsulated external cavity wall as shown. So, to calculate the U value of the wall, given the construction has the following uh, sequence and data. 
So you're told, I suppose, that the external plaster is 16 millimeters. You're told that the external block on, on the cavity is 100 mil. The cavity itself, which is empty, is 100 mil. The block itself is on the inside, in relief, is 100 mil. And the internal plaster is 13 mil. You're told that the thermal data of the ex external wall, you're told the resistance, all right, is that they give you the units. You're, you're told the conductivity of the plaster. They, again, they give you the units and the, the symbol for that. Conductivity is small k, resistance is big R. So the conductivity of the concrete block work applies to the inner and outer block. So that's 1.44 watts per meter degree Celsius, similar to the Kelvin which is one Kelvin one equals one degree Celsius. That's a physics thing. Uh, resistance of the cavity. So the resistance of the air in the cavity is that. The resistance of the internal surface is that. And the resistance of the external surface is that. So the resistance of the external surface is like the air that clings to the outer surface of the wall. So you just take that as a given. The similar, in, Every surface, the internal surface here has a surface resistance of 0 0.104. So imagine a bird and it's fluffing its feathers. The reason it fluffs its feathers is to create air pockets in with the flutter, feathers that keeps the, the bird warm in, in rain, for example. So that inner and external, internal and external surface resistance is just air that clings to the surface. Okay, so we're just going to focus on part A video. So part A, step one, you draw out what they ask you to calculate the U value through. So 16 mil ex external plaster, 100 mil internal external block, 100 mil air cavity, 100 mil internal block, and then 13 millimeters of plaster on the inside. You have your external surface resistance and your internal surface resistance, which is like your air, like I said, that, can, that sticks to the wall. You've got to convert all into meters. Okay, so that catches some people sometimes. So converting 16, 13, and 100 millimeters to meters. Okay, you've got to be very careful where you put your decimal points in these questions. The second step is set up a table. Okay. So the table never changes. The table consists of the material on the far left, conductivity, small k, resistivity, small r, thickness in meters, resistance, and then U value. So our end goal is to get the U value of the wall. Okay. Seeing as this is a, a 1970s building, chances are it's going to be a pretty high U value. Okay, because there's no insulation in there. So it's probably going to be somewhere between 1.5 and 2 watts per meter squared degree Celsius. Um, so we're given conductivities, or sorry, we're given uh, re total resistances of the external surface. That's easy. We can leave these areas blank. The conductivity, the resistivity, and the thickness. So we just go straight for the resistance. So that's easy. The same goes for the internal surface at the end. Blank conductivity, blank resistivity, blank thickness. And you give the, the, the resistance that you were given the question there. This also helps you, seeing as they give you the resistance, you can put in the unit that they gave you in the question on top of the resistance here, which, is, which helps. You know the thickness is in meters. They also give you the unit here for conductivity and they give you the unit for resistivity they are basically opposites. How you, if you're given conductivities of a material, how you find the resistivity of it is you divide one by the conductivity to get the resistivity. Okay, so that's how you get. So one divided by 0.43 for the external plaster gives us 2.32. Usually go to about four decimal places when you're calculating those. So once you get the, the resistivity column filled, you then multiply that by the thickness to get the resistance. Once we get all the resistances together, we calculate sigma r, which is total of r, 
we get that total R, we get the unit and we put it after it, meters squared degrees Celsius per watt. How we then convert the total resistance or the total resistance to the passage of heat through that wall, we then divide that by one. So one divided by total resistance gives us our U value and our answer. And that is it.